So about a year ago, um, you wrote about how the effect of social media was being maybe overestimated in terms of mm -hmm. um, the Arab Spring. And I'm wondering how in the last year your thinking on that has changed, if it's changed at all. Well, I don't think it's changed at all. I mean, I, I was skeptical that social media was this um, catalytic force that uh -huh. people were saying it was a year ago. And then we had, you know, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Libya, on and on. And, you know, everyone got all excited about its role in Egypt. And then the sort of data began to emerge. And now we discover, for example, my favorite little tidbit was a study that showed that the protests were most active and most effective once the Egyptian government had shut down the internet. In other yeah. words, once people were off their devices and actually <laughs> on the streets, they, act, they and then they brought the government. They could focus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then in um, Libya, of course, no one talked about it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like in um, you know one hates to be so self. So right. So <laughs> I always hate to be right. I know. I, I might be. I might actually. Too, by the way, no one's more surprised than I am that I turned out to be right on this one. Because that was one of those shots across the bow that you take from time to time. But turns out. I mean, yes, to my utter. And so this is, this is an interesting time, you know, to be thinking about the powerful and the powerless, which I know is something you're thinking about a lot. Um, and is there anything you can, you can deduce from these revolutions in terms of that concept? Is there something specific yeah. that these say to us about the powerful and the powerless right well, now? Well, I should, I should say why I'm so interested in the powerful and the powerless. Why not? That is, in fact, the subject of my next book, which I'm now um, at work on. And, um, you know, I, and the Arab Spring had a lot to do with why I wanted to write this new oh. book. Um, it's one of the things that got me thinking about it. Um, and, you know, there's so many little, there's so many um, uh, implications in, uh, of that particular uh, extraordinary series of events. Um, and one is that the stronger is never as strong as they uh, look, mm -hmm. seem like they are, and the weaker are never as weak as they seem like they are. I mean, it's, it's the, um, which sounds like a really kind of um, trivial thing to say, but it's actually, the more you think about it, it's really interesting because it suggests that our categories of weak and strong are naive, right? We're using the wrong criteria to, to call someone strong and to call somebody weak. Um, and so what I want to do is to kind of um, reassess those criteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made it sound like it's a McKinsey study, but um, <laughs> my hope is it will be more interesting. It's going to be more sophisticated <laughs> than that, yeah? No, more interesting. More interesting. Not, not more sophisticated. Far be it. Yeah. Um, speaking of sophistication, mm -hmm. can you talk to us about the difference between intellect and genius? Or as you say, genius? <laughs> I do say genius. Um, that's an odd question. Uh, the, what is the difference? Well, you know, there's an interesting, um, I'm going to answer this in a very, very roundabout way, um, as I like to do. Uh, I once read this really interesting paper about secretariat, you know, the great horse, mm -hmm. right? a racehorse. Secretariat's offspring are, um, he's the greatest racehorse of all time, maybe. Uh, his offspring have been incredibly disappointing. He, he was put out to stud, and his, they just like, it was, not much came of Secretariat, whereas other slightly lesser horses produced a whole slew of amazing offspring. So the question is, why did the greatest horse of all time, why did the genius of horses um, have such, uh, such a paltry set of, of uh, progeny, whereas the lesser ones didn't? And the answer is that um, that's what's the difference between genius and intellect, right? Uh, he was so one of a kind and so kind of that you couldn't reproduce whatever extraordinary um, uh, one in a million set of circumstances, genetic circumstances, had to come together to be secretariat. So him and anybody else is just, you're back to zero. Mm. You've regressed to the mean. Whereas someone who's just a little bit further down, but who's a more kind of stable form of, of talent and ability. Uh, Above a threshold. Yeah, yeah. that's reproducible. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the kind of, you know, a reminder that real genius is, is a once-in-a-lifetime event. And the lesser kind, you can get lots of. 